Hey family, what's good? This is your girl on the Bronze Goddess and I'm actually here today just to talk to you guys and also to share with you all the story of how I was actually bullied once in high school, what I learned from being bullied and also how I overcame it. And so I'm going to talk to you guys about that in just a minute. But when I was younger, growing up as a preacher's kid, I'm also a preacher's kid, the stepdaughter of a preacher, niece of a preacher, granddaughter, all of that. I have preachers and teachers on both sides of my family and I feel like sometimes they can make you feel, the world can make you feel like you're an oddball or you're an outcast. They make you feel like being a Christian is lame and that you're missing out on things and that's actually not true. When I was younger, I wish there were resources available that really helped to make me feel like I wasn't alone, that I could be 16, love God, and still love fashion, and still love makeup, and still love boy bands, or whatever it is that I was into. And so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that, because if you are younger, and you're a Christian teen, I want to suggest something to you. There is a book that's called Project Inspired, uh, Tips and Tricks for How to Stay True to Who You Really Are. It's actually from an author called Nicole Wider. There's a website that's also by the same name, Project inspired and they have so many things available on that website I actually went there last night and checked it out they have like forums if you're in high school if you're in college if you are there's a beauty area that you're talking about glam for God how to be modest when you're going to prom or when you're going on a date or how to wear the latest trends in a modest way they also have like fashion and so many different things available for you and the the whole creator behind this Nicole Wider actually shares her story on the homepage where she talks about how she moved to California at a young age to pursue her dream of becoming a model and the next thing she knew uh, you know she was posing for lingerie and things like that and she had gotten so far away from where she wanted to be people were always sort of downing her and it was so a cutthroat the environment that she was in telling her she wasn't pretty enough she wasn't tall enough she wasn't skinny enough and it really started to mess with her low her self-esteem and so she basically she found God in this time and you know during that whole thing she was like journaling and talking about her experiences and then she written a book about it so if you are somebody who is a Christian girl and you are trying to find your way you love God but you still love other things and you want somebody to meet you where you are I definitely recommend this book to you I know a lot of you are younger and you watch my videos you watch my strawberry letters my relationship videos and you tell me how much they help you and you've been asking me to make more content for my young Younger viewers and so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to suggest this to you guys because in the meantime you know you could definitely check out that website and check out that book as a great resource for my young Christian teen subscribers out there but now let's go on with my story of when I was actually bullied so I was in high school uh, my family moved when I was a junior and my sister was a senior. So we went to our brand new school and we didn't really know anybody. Uh, we were riding the bus, our first time ever riding the bus at our new school, and we started hearing people snickering and saying things at the back of the bus. You know, my, like I said, my daddy was a pastor and I'm from a long line of preachers and teachers and so, you know, people saying things like, you know, they sure dress nice. I wonder if their dad had to do a separate collection plate for them to wear those nice outfits or, you know, they're just making little really snide comments about preachers and making fun of the church as a whole and you know it really kind of bothered us my sister and I have always been really protective of my father um, that's just one of our things like you can say whatever you want to say about me but don't dare don't you dare talk slick about my dog on daddy and so we already knew what it was gonna be so anyway you know we got we tried to ignore it for as much as we could but then eventually it just got to be too much so we ended up going to the principal with my mother and believe it or not I don't know if the principal was a genius or if he was an idiot because he told us as long as we had permission from our parents that we could fight that we had the school's permission to fight so what we actually did is we went to the girls who were making fun of us and bothering us and we told them look we actually have permission so all you have to do if you want to make this happen is get permission from your mom or your dad and we can fight because clearly y'all have a problem with us and that's what y'all want right so you would not believe how quickly they backpedaled me I wasn't talking about y'all. I actually like your makeup. I actually like your clothes. I don't, were you talking about them? Because I wasn't talking about them. Like watching them backpedal and watching them say, I don't want to fight. You want to fight? Like it's just, it's crazy. And I realized something. I actually heard Al Sharpton say this. The Reverend Al Sharpton say one time, as long as you run, they'll chase you. What I learned from that experience is that oftentimes your giant your Goliath seems a lot bigger and you give it a lot more credit than it really deserves. At the time it seemed like the whole school, not the whole school, but there, this big clique, this big group of girls were against just my sister and I. 
But when we really had to take the time and stop running and stood up for ourselves, there was no one really there. And I, I wanted to make this video for a lot of you, of course, girls who are being bullied in high school. Of course, I'm not recommending that you fight, but I am recommending that you stand up for yourself. If we had let them, they would have ruined our junior and senior year in high school. And a lot of you are, you're being overwhelmed by the size of your giant. Your giant, your Goliath, your bully could be uh, moving away from home. It could be owning your own home. It could be asking for a job that you want. It could be anything that you are intimidated by. Your bully could be anything that you're intimidated by and you feel like there is no way you could possibly defeat this thing. There is no way you could graduate from high school. There's no way you could graduate from college. There's no way you'd be the first to get your degree. Whatever your giant is, it is not as big as you're giving it credit. Once you actually stand up for yourself, you'd be amazed at what happens. You may not always have to fight in those situations, but you can't always run from every problem that intimidates you. The situation that I went through with me being bullied taught me that I was a lot stronger than I thought I was. Because who knew how many girls there were, but I was willing to stand up for myself and what I believed in. I was tired of it. I was fed up and I was determined that I was not going to let somebody else determine how my junior year in high school went. I decided to be in the, in the driver's seat of my own life. And a lot of you have to do that. Like I said, I'm not advocating that you go out there and you fight every bully, bully, but I am saying that you should stand up for yourself and not be intimidated by the size of your giant. That's all David needed was a couple smooth rocks and a slingshot. You are destined for greatness. And just because you're a Christian doesn't mean it's going to be easy. So if that's what you thought it was going to be, I have news for you. The devil wants you back. I did a video about it a while ago called Jealous Ex-Boyfriend. The devil wants you back. He missed those times you had together. He's jealous of your new relationship with God. But the thing about it is, God has this fight fixed. He wins in the end. You're on the right side. Don't let anybody make you question that you're doing the right thing. There is no way that you can fall when you are walking with God. There is no safer place to be than being with God. And I know people, the devil try to make you feel like everybody else is doing it. This is so much cooler on the outside. Is it really cooler? What are you really missing out on? You, the last thing you want to miss out on is heaven. The thing about it is with bullies is hurt people hurt people. These are hurt, bullies are people who typically they need a hug. They, they pick on you for insecurities that they have within themselves. They, they make fun of your clothes because they don't have the courage to dress as, the way that you do. Because they don't, they don't have the courage to speak up for themselves. It's normally something in you. They say a hater is nothing but a misguided admirer. Normally, when you get down to it, there's something about you that the, bu the bully wishes that they had. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you want to find out more about Project Inspired, I'll be sure to link them below. And be sure to check out that book if you're interested in reading more about how you can be a good Christian teen, whether it's dating, a relationship, fashion, whatever it is, then you'll most likely find it on the website and in the book. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, later divas and dudes. Deuces, honey.